And now let's meet our two teams. First, introducing the non-starters for Kenosha Tramper. Number two, Kathy Celebre. Number eight, Alex Valeri. Number 13, Jesse McKay. Number 14, Jordan Hollingsworth. Number 16, Becky Knapp. Number 17, Amy Wilson. Number 19, Ashley Zenner. Number 21, Anne-Marie Riva. Number 22, Brooke Monroe. Number 23, Madison Monroe. Number 24, Holly Mahoney. Introducing the Mount Starters for the Pier. Number two, Alec Kleitz. Number five, Emmy Dressen. Number seven, Mackenzie Wallace. Number ten, Joel Stewart. Number thirteen, Elizabeth Balser. Number fourteen, Emily Hetman. Number sixteen, Demi Edwards. Number eighteen, Dakota Sigger. Number 19, Drew Beers. Number 22, Gabby Piet. Number 25, Hannah Baldwin. And now let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, for the Kenosha Tramper Trojans. Senior midfield, number three, Sarah Mahoney. Junior midfield, number four, Lizzie Hawbaker. Senior defender number five, Paige DeThorn. Senior midfield number six, Carol Larson. Senior defender number seven, Elise Valeri. Senior midfield number nine, Haley Celebre. Senior defender number 10, Patrice Brown. Junior forward number 12, Maggie Edmark. Freshman defender, number 15, Kelsey Dano. Junior forward, number 20, Abby Soraki. And starting in goal, senior Taylor Dwyer. The head coach of the Kenosha Tremper Trojans is Tom Hardy. Introducing the starting lineup from the De Pier Redbirds. The 30th annual WIAA Girls Soccer State Tournament continues here from Time Warner Cable Stadium at the Line Soccer Park in Milwaukee. Our first Division I semifinal features the Kenosha Tremper Trojans out of the Southeast Conference 
against the Fox River Classic Conferences, the Pure Red Birds. And good evening, my name is Matt Menzel here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. The winner of this game moved on to the Division I Championship game at 2 p.m. tomorrow to face the winner of our night camp between Madison West and Grafton. The Pier in their home white unis with Kenosha Trump in their way blue. The Pier in yesterday's quarterfinal able to prevail by way of an own goal that was scored two minutes and 55 seconds on in. Even without a single shot being credited their direction in the second half, able to hang on for the 1 0 victory. And for Kenosha Tremper, they're coming off a 3 3 tie against Eau Claire Memorial, advancing by way of a shootout 4 2. Off the takeaway by Danielle Steger. And the ball to be set up in the corner by the Redbirds. They come in with 20 victories, four defeats. They have three ties. They have won five consecutive unbeaten in their last 12 games. Daniel Steger on the corner kick. Was trying to hook up in front with Manny Miller and the Piers going to strike first. And Lauren Splitter removed up the defender for the pier after Manny Miller was the intended focal point off the corner kick strike that was taken by Danielle Steger. And just 46 seconds on in, Redbirds have a one goal lead in this Division I semifinal. So that's the way things get underway in this Division I semifinal. Off a corner kick with Danielle Steger and Manny Miller, but then Lawrence Putgerber directly in front. And the Redbirds able to score their second goal here at State. But here on the season, the team's been able to score over 64 times. Lawrence Putgerber credited with the tally, which is now going to be her first of the season. And for the assist, that credited to Manny Miller. And for Miller picking up assist number two. All set up after the corner kick taken by Danielle Steger. Going Manny Miller's direction before it was Lawrence Blickgerber on the send it. So 46 seconds on in. It's to peer in front by a goal. Watching the replay. And here's the corner kick by Danielle Steger and then Bounced up off Miller, who then headed it directly in front, and then it was headed on in with Lawrence Blicker lowering the head, got a piece of it, and by it goes, Taylor Dwyer. So without even getting a foot on the ball, you had Miller, and then you had Splitgerber and DePier with the early advantage. Sent up field by Lawrence Splitgerber. Kenosha Tremper now with Lizzie Hallbaker. All Baker able to score their first goal in yesterday's game that came in the 33rd minute after the old Avery able to jump in front. 2 0 in that game. Sent the cross midfield. Trying to get a piece of it was Jenna Holowinski. And now with Sarah Mahoney. Back on the outside. You have loose ball sent away. Megan Lindstrom, the starting keeper for the Pier, back for her junior season. Tapped away that time by Abby Siraki. Siraki in yesterday's game put it with one shot. It was on goal for a Tremper team that finished with 10 shots in the game, seven of which on goal in the eventual shootout victory. Trojans with 22 victories, three defeats, and a couple of ties. They have won 15 out of their last 16. They find themselves unbeaten in 16 of their past 17 games. Lone loss in that stretch, a regular season finale against the Wanake Warriors. Elise Valeri. Again, back up top here in the fourth minute. Back up tap it goes, trying to connect with Lizzie Hallbaker. On the outside with Haley Celebre. Trying to center it across with Maggie Edmark down the middle. She was a 
key component in yesterday's game. It was Maggie Edmark who would eventually bring the Trojans back to within one when she scored a goal in the 73rd minute. Trojans in all in that game would fall behind three to one. That came in the 71st minute, came right back about a minute 30, about two minutes and 30 seconds later when Maggie Edmark able to pick up what turned out to be her 42nd goal before Tara Larson able to find the equalizer some six minutes later to force overtime. Sent across by Edmark and lifted up and over Sarah Mahoney. Mahoney, a 5'7", senior midfielder of 2011. All conference honorable mention. Set up here for Megan Lindstrom, who in yesterday's game. No goals allowed in one save. 80 minutes of play coming into the state tournament with a 0 0.60 goals against average. Page to Thorne. Trying to split a pair, it's knocked out. Was battling against Reese Ebert, the sophomore defender. Throw in there by Terry Larson after it was granted it to Kenosha Tremper. But a quick scoop up after the run with Abby Siraki. Megan Lindstrom on the pickup. Ford the pier with that shutout victory against Waukesha West. That being their 16th shutout on the season. In fact, they have shut out every playoff opponent they have faced. Coming in, they've outscored their first five postseason opponents by a score of 18 to nothing. Valeri, now Larson, getting the feed right back on the feed from Lizzie Hallbaker. And banking up forward to Pierre, Jessica Splickerber. Will beat Green Bay West in that regional semifinal 7 0. As Wombadon 4 0 in a regional final. And that beat both Sheboygan schools in the north and south. Beat Sheboygan North in a sectional semifinal 3 0. Sheboygan. North team finishing tied for first top the Fox River Classic Conference with the Pier. They will bring their sixth conference championship home under head coach Trissa Rhodes. And then knocking off Sheboygan South by way of that sectional final 3-0. Trying to find it and doing just that is Maddie Miller. Not deflecting off Maggie Edmark. And now Edmark against Lawrence Blitgerber. That deflected off of Lizzie Hallbaker and the Pier able to send it back on that far wing. There you go. Just underway in this D1 state semifinal, our first of two. We were in the seventh minute. And the Pier able to score 46 seconds on in. Well, too far ahead for Carmen Villarule. Even though that wasn't own goal in yesterday's game, Villarule the closest to scoring for the Pier. Finishing the contest with two goals or two shots, both which on goal, coming in tops on the team with 16 goals and four assists. Nearly taken away by Frankie Jansen. Jansen battling side by side with Abby Siraki. And a foul is going to go against Jansen. Set up here now for Lizzie Hallbaker. And a three player wall for the pier. They will back up now the. Ten yards, a fourth will join. In the middle, you have Danielle Steger along with Carmen Villarule. On the right-footed strike by Harbaker. That's going to deflect wide right for Abby Siraki. Ball being set up by Megan Lindstrom and a goal kick here for the pier back at State for the fourth time. And in doing so, they find themselves in a semifinal game. This for the first time since their 2007 appearance. In fact, it's only the second time in the four state tournament appearances there in the semis. Bringing for the ball is Jenna Holowinski. Coming away out is Taylor Dwyer. Holowinski run down. Play on situation. The ball comes right back toward Danielle Steger. Kicked away by Elise Valeri. Valeri a 2011 second team all conference selection. Jansen. Now Hallbaker coming into the state tournament with 13 goals along with 14 assists for 40 points. But again, yesterday's game, one shot, it was on goal, goal performance. Eight 
And it goes to Mahoney. Trying to go right back toward Tara Larson. Off the takeaway to Pierre. Trying to hook up with Villa Rule, but stepping in front was Mahoney. On the left footed swing. Catch made by Megan Lindstrom. One of these seven juniors forward to Pierre. Young team with nine freshmen, four sophomores, seven juniors to go along with the two seniors. One of those freshmen. Fun play to watch, about to sub on in with Alec Kleiss. Kleiss, a 5'2 freshman forward. Eight goals and seven assists. And it's surprisingly yesterday, Kleiss was limited to just one shot. It was not on goal. Despite, again, her speed and her ability to get open and get that through ball and the touch the opposing goalkeeper. Scoop up there by Megan Lindstrom. Already staying busy here in the opening half. Ten minutes on in. Valeri plays it back. And now sent downfield. On the run near side by Villarul. Going to roll out a play after she was battling against Kelsey Dano. Dano back for her freshman season. Now one of the four freshmen for the Trojans. Team that has nothing but freshmen, juniors, and seniors. Ten seniors on their 23-man roster coming in, but one of their juniors, that beat Emma Hughes a scratch for this game. And a corner kick for Daniel Steger. To appear yesterday with five corner kicks, the only corner kicks in that quarterfinal, and all of them came in the opening 40 minutes. That's off the foot of Reese Ebert, right into the hands of Taylor Dwyer. So Steger hooking up with Reese Ebert, the sophomore, 4 11. Off the side of her cleat and Taylor Dwyer on the catch. Dwyer, a 5'8", senior goalkeeper, a 2011 first team all conference selection. Yesterday, yesterday allowing three goals, making three saves in 100 minutes locked. She came into the state tournament with a 0 0.65 goals against average. Throw in, trying to hook up with Alex Valeri. I uh, checked there with Greta Arsham up, up top for the pier. And a restart coming up for the Trojans. Finishing in first place this year in the Southeast Conference. A perfect 7-0 with Muskego in second. They were two games back. But when looking at their wins and losses, they have Three losses, two of which came against North Shore Conference opponents. They lost their season opener in double overtime against Homestead. Also fell victim against Grafton, who is a potential target and opponent. The Trojans can find a way to win this game, and then Grafton takes care of Madison West. Wide goes Tara Larson. Again, Larson yesterday had the equalizing goal. That came with only a couple minutes left in regulation, and for Larson... Two shots, one of which on goal. As Megan Lindstrom with the upcoming goal kick. That was a game that featured a combined 19 shots, 10 of which belonging to Kenosha Tremper. Mahoney, again to Larson. Swings it in with the left foot, but back out it comes. Larson again, nice high ball off the post, and back out it comes right toward the feet of Haley Celebrate. Liz Hallbaker sends it across. Larson got a piece of it, but a goal kick coming up for the pier. Last time we saw the Redbirds here at State was back in 2009. A season that we'll see the team lose right away by way of a quarterfinal against the Brookfield Central Lancers 2-0. Now before that, back in 2007, again was the last time they had gotten through that quarterfinal round, the only time in their previous three state tournament appearances. But in doing so, had a couple of shutout victories to get into the championship game. They would go on and by way of a shutout knockoff, Waukesha West, then came Kenosha Bradford before they'd eventually lose by way of double overtime against, De Pier against Homestead in that championship game. 
And on their first ever state tournament appearance back in 06, it was the shootout that would do them in if they would go on and fall victim against Middleton in a quarterfinal. Knocked out of play by Elise Valeri. Throwing that toward Mahoney. Taken away though by Arsha. After sending it across, back in midfield comes toward the feet of Maggie Edmark who gets taken down. A stoppage here. Frankie Jansen. You have Maggie Edmark who picked up a yellow card in yesterday's game in the first overtime. That coming after a yellow card handing out to head coach Todd Hardy. Restart here in the 15th, soon to be 16th minute. There's a foul going against Haley Celebrate. For the pier. Headed on down, deflected off Mahoney. And now Elise Valeri. Trying to offset Greta Arsham. Gets in front, leads it back on the wing for Larson. Coming back in, cutting back in on Daniel Steger. And now we'll leave it back. Elise Valeri. On the turn by Daniel Steger, knocked down down again by Valeri, and sent across midfield by Alyssa Balser in her sophomore season. Balser this season having scored four times, picking up a couple of assists. Help get the scoring started in their sectional final victory against the Boyan South. A game that would see Balser along with Jessica Splitgerber and Alec Kleiss all score goals. But yesterday, the first time that the period had been held to a goal or less since that regular season finale against Green Bay Preble. Although you have to go all the way back to their last loss, which came as mentioned at this stage a good 13 games ago. Now 14 when they lost 3-1 against Nina. Lindstrom. Hop right in front of Patrice Brown on defense. <laughs> Brown running it down, but got bumped out of the way, able to recover, and back to the way she comes. Villarule. Now knocked away by Abby Siraki at first. Off the side cleat with Kathy Celebrate now into the Trojan lineup. On the wing against Alyssa Balser. And now Celebrate. Larson, back with Maggie Edmark. Over is Tara Larson. And the bounce is going to deflect off the side of the netting. one nothing early. We're in the 18th minute. <laughs> the pier right now with the early advantage thanks to a goal by Lauren Splitgerber. All set up after a corner kick by Daniel Steger in which Maddie Miller got a head on it and then it was... Directed on in by Splitgerber. Her first goal of the season. And now goal number 64 for the Redbirds. And it's 46 seconds on in. Right now the difference maker. Madison Monroe will sub in the Trojan lineup replacing Maggie Edmark. And Mark coming into the top offensive threat on the Trojan roster with 42 goals and a total of 91 points. Out of the handle of Monroe, and so a goal kick again for the Pier. Again, stay tuned. 8 p.m., it's our second D1 state semifinal. Madison West, Grafton. Battle of a couple of Number six seeds in the respective brackets going at it. Division one side, nothing but unranked teams remaining. Top 10, all eliminated. Brown. Going right back toward Siraki. On the move by <coughs> Hall Baker and in front Larson. And they've got a piece of it, but Alyssa Balser there defensively before the pickup by Megan Lindstrom. 
Yet Bonser in front, able to slow down the move by Tara Larson after the feed from Lizzie Harbaker. Dwyer on the pickup. Had a three save performance in the sectional final victory for the Trojans in making their, this their ninth state tournament appearance. They beat Janesville Parker in a regional semifinal 10 0. Burlington 6 0 in a regional final. They beat Lake Geneva Badger in a sectional semifinals 3 0 before taking care of Racine Horlick 6 0 in that sectional final. 25 0. They had outscored their opponents' party yesterday's game. And it took Eau Claire Memorial 10 minutes and 24 seconds to score first in that quarterfinal. Larson. Getting knocked down was Harbaker. And now Jessica Splitgerber jumping in front is Tara Larson. On the slide there by Villarule. Taken away though by Patrice Brown. Brown. That sent the way. Staying with Sarah Mahoney. Siraki, that was sent down by Maddie Miller. With that said, we will have a mandatory water break now here in the 21st minute. Every game but the first game is implemented a water break because of the heat on this day. And being down there on the field, you have the heat rising off that turf. Very muggy Friday night. Expected to be almost an identical weather forecast on Saturday. But right now the water break halfway through the first half and again in the, around the 60th minute and half number two. Right now the difference maker a goal that was scored 46 seconds on in. As Lawrence Blickerber was able to score off the assist from Maddie Miller. That's the difference maker in the semifinal. For Canosa Tremper, so the team that was one and done in each of their last three state tournament appearances, they find themselves in the semifinals for the first time since their appearance back in 2004, but they have yet to be and make an appearance in the championship game. Something they're certainly hoping to do again. And looking to do this season. Lost in a semi in 2004. Otherwise they have been one and done. Seven out of their, or I should say six out of their previous eight appearances. Only time they've been in the semis, both 2003 and again in 2004. But if you have to qualify for the championship game, something they're hoping will change by game's end. Putting some pressure on Megan Lindstrom. 21st minute. Mahoney leaves it back. Bounces up top. Tough angle that time on the shot for Jordan Hollingsworth into the game, the junior midfielder. Three goals, four assists, ten points this season. Did not play in yesterday's game for the Trojans. Again, this is a team playing without Emma Hughes, who was one of the starting 11 in yesterday's game. Good looking opportunity. Corner kick Trojans. Appear defensively will set up with Emily Hetman in the lineup. And now she's one of the two defenders flanking Megan Lindstrom. Going to be Sarah Mahoney, 21 55 and counting gone by here in the first half. Headed back out. Chased down by Jordan Hollingsworth. She'll give way and played back up her direction by way of Kathy Celebre. And a throw in forward the pier. For the Redbirds. 
Spun around was Alec Kleiss. She'll get downfield. It's Jessica Splitgerber on the centering pass. And now it's Jenna Holowinski. That was knocked on down by Jessica Splitgerber. Downfield for Alec Kleiss. Coming way out and playing it off. A short hop and getting across that goal box. Taylor Dwyer. She crossed that line to haul it in. Then Kenosha Tremper kicked the ball and yellow card to be handed out. You betcha. Sent off with Lizzie Hallbaker. That's the third yellow card issue to the Trojans in this tournament. Twenty-fourth minute. And the ball being set up by Jessica Splitgerber. Uh, Taylor Dwyer made the catch, but taking a step outside the box as she came out, following the run by Alec Kleitz. Splitgerber. And a goal kick now for the Trojans. Getting sent off now with Madison Monroe. Couple of changes for the Trojans and their 11. As Hallbaker among those back in. And off the Harbaker who in yesterday's game among those with one of these seven shots on goal. Most of which for the Trojans coming early on. Surprisingly with only two shots in the second half, both of them going in against the Eau Claire Memorial's goalkeeper Jenna Sturz. Off to a nice start, even though they were down two to one by halftime. But out shoot the old Aves in that opening 40 minutes, seven to four. That off of Maggie Edmark. <laughs> and the Trojans throwing it in. Right now, DePierre hanging on to a one goal lead. On a goal that was scored nearly 24 minutes ago. Elise Valeria is back into the Trojan lineup, replacing Patrice Brown, and I'll drop it to the far side as Kathy Celebre. Celebre and Valeri flip flop sides on the field. Larson got turned around. One touch there by Kathy Celebre. And now with Abby Savile into the DePier lineup. And a foul here against the Trojans. If you're just joining us already, the Division Three and Division Two championship games determined. Earlier action here from Time Warner Cable Stadium at Eli Soccer Park seeing Lake Country Lutheran University Lake Co-op. Knock off St. Mary's Central and then the Prairie School. It will be Oostburg 4-1. Jumping in front 3-0 by the first half. And so the Prairie School is back into the championship game. That Division 3 title game coming away at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And then in Division 2, yeah, Mount Horeb in their first ever state tournament appearance. Championship get game bound against Catholic Memorial. Oh, it's knocked away. This will be a corner kick for Jenna Holowinski. Near his post, Alyssa Balser. And that's going to be headed on out. Another corner kick again for the pier. And again to be struck by Holowinski among those nine freshmen. Come oh, back toward the ball is Balser. That flying over the head of Greta Arsham. Also, they had Maddie Miller before Kenosha Tremper. Send it back up field toward Abby Siraki. Off the left cleat with Split Gerber. Nice feet to the outside, but the offside flag going up. 
We had talked about it a little bit yesterday as far as the youth on this team concerned. Trisha Rhodes was back for a 11th season. She was the 2004 State Coach of the Year. We talked about having a young team. Uh, she would never have taken those freshmen on her team if she didn't think they were going to have an impact on this season's roster. And sure enough, even Al Kleist, who has come on scene, one of the first players off that bench. Daniel Steger, who took the corner kick, which eventually set up the first goal in this game. We have seen Greta Arsham on the attack. We have seen Jenna Hall Lewinsky. Was among the nine freshmen that have seen significant playing time for Coach Rhodes. That's kind of been, again, the story in the Fox River Classic Conference this season. It's been the youth movement. And teams all over that conference have excelled with freshmen and sophomores this year. After a big graduation involving the conference from that of a year ago, number of the top scorers, number of the first team all conference selections, all lost to graduation. And a quick strike and a goal for Carmen Villarreal. And a Peer with a 2 0 lead. <laughs> 28 minutes and 13 seconds on in. Carmen Villarreal with officially now her 17th goal on the season. And the Redbirds have a two goal lead. She was able to get in front of the defense. Stayed in front before getting the shot off despite having Kelsey Dano on her backside. And Carmen Villarreal giving the Redbirds a two goal lead. We have an injured Trojan. Went down as the play was developing. And again, that occurred in the 29th minute. So it appear they have come out here in this first half. They have scored twice. Both teams with the pier back in their team huddle. Same thing for Kenosha Tremper. And so an injury stoppage here. It's going to be Paige to Thorne already wearing a knee brace. Making her way back toward the Trojan sideline toward that athletic training tent. So again, following the injury timeout, Lauren Splitgerber and Carmen Villarule, the two goal recipient for the pier. That makes 65 goals this season for the Redbirds. They have credited Jessica Splitgerber with her 10th assist. Splitgerber able to feed the ball to Villarule, so she's credited with her 10th assist, 17th goal for Villarule. That's tops on the team. And appear with a two goal advantage. Lauren Splitgerber. And a throw in for the Redbirds. That thrown in to Abby Saville. Battling against Jessica Splitgerber. Knocked on down by Lauren Splitgerber. Trojans. Trying to send it across, and again, from a setup standpoint, closest they had was Tara Larson. She'd made some nice runs in this game, coming in third on the team with 37 points, nine goals, and 19 assists. Able to pick up one goal in the team's six goal victory in that sectional final. In one of the three playoff games, it would see them notch. At least six tallies, the lone exception being that sectional semifinal against Badger. They came in one of the top goal totals in all of Division One. 
Back to the three goals they were able to score in yesterday's quarter. Finally, they had scored 116 times this season. Only allowing around 17. This has been the first time that they have allowed multi-goals to the opposition. That in back-to-back -back games since the final two games of the regular season. Gave up two against Racine Case in what was a 7-2 victory before giving up a total of five and a 5-2 loss against Wanakee in that finale. But now giving up on back-to-back occasions, multi-talent to the opposition, three in yesterday's game, and now two so far today to the Redbirds. That's the only time it's occurred here this season. Nice drive by Maggie Edmark into the hands of Megan Lindstrom. 31st minute. And Mark. And now with Valeri. Angling back in around Carmen Villarule. Trojans leave it back and will send it ahead. Trying to connect with Larson. Off the knee of Valeri. Taken away by Villarule. Jessica Splitgerber. Going back in the ball is Kathy Celebrate. Oncoming is Abby Salvo for the pier, but off the Trojan throw in, they hook back up with Haley Celebrate. Getting of Lizzie Hall Baker back into the lineup. Already a yellow card in this one, the third in the tournament for the Trojans who find themselves down a couple. Offside flag. That going up against Alyssa Balser. Right, that time you also had Greta Arsham. Making that move down. Feel along with Carmen Villarule. Now the restart for Kelsey Dano. And Mark. Larson got a piece of it, but on the near side, Maggie Edmark. That sent out a play. 33rd minute. You're going to throw one coming up. And that's going to belong to DePierre. Again in this Division I state semifinal, you have the DePierre Redbirds out of the Fox River Classic Conference in the All White. Coming in with 20 victories, four defeats, three ties, five straight victories unbeaten over their last 12 games against the Kenosha Tremper Trojans out of the Southeast Conference in the All Blue with 22 victories, three defeats. Notching their second tie yesterday as they have now gone unbeaten in 16 of their last 17 games. Villa Rule. Sent behind the north goal. For the Trojans, Alex Valeri is in. Out goes Maggie Edmark. Second time that she's been sent off. Off a handball. Going right back the direction. Here are the Redbirds. Just to be set up by Frankie Jansen. Down to six minutes before halftime. The period's been up since 46 seconds in. Breaking for the ball is ball, sir. She'll get there, she'll shoot, and she just missed. Wide right. Right place to get after that loose ball, but she moved in. Sail just to her right side of the near side post on the north end goal. and Just missed, giving the Redbirds the commanding three-goal advantage. 
Substitution into the Kenosha Tramper lineup 22. Trojans. I'm going to get something going offensively. <coughs> Generally would find themselves down a couple in yesterday's game. And Spirited come back in the final 10 minutes. Sarah Mahoney. Now the throw in here. Again for Mahoney. At the fucking off the feet of Haley Celebrate. At least Valeri. Now the pier. That's redirected. Trying to get to it. And it's sent down off of Mahoney. For the pier, here's the throw in now for Alyssa Balser. That was headed by Carmen Villarul. Get a piece of it to Greta Arsham. And now Carmen Villarul. Balser. Locking ankles that time with Dano. Mahoney coming over to help out Dano. And that ball the flat south is going to belong to the Trojans by way of a goal kick. Inside of four minutes left here in the first half. And now it's Jenna Holowinski knocked down from behind. And a lecture being given there to Haley celebrate. Turn it down a notch. Ball being set up for the pier for Jessica Splitgerber. So she backs up. Two-player wall for the Trojans. Jessica Splitgerber. And the ball caught by Taylor Dwyer. And the pier will have possession. Mahoney, she was able to knock it away from Carmen Villarul, who's in this first half scoring the second to pier goal at 28-13 on it. And officially credited with her 17th tally after yesterday's game. Saw the goal go down on the stat sheet as an own goal. Carmen Villarul was the closest Redbird to potentially touching that loose ball in front. But going down as an own goal off of Waukesha West, and that was the way the Wolverine season came to an end. They went 19 and 5 after bringing on the Classic 8 Conference Championship. After the foul against Drew Ebert, not alone the freshmen seen significant playing time for Coach Rhodes. And off of Sarah Mahoney. And a change being made to the Redbird 11, which we'll see Jenna Holowinski get a breather. Redbird's thrown to Jessica Splitgerber. Knocked on down by Brooke Monroe. I would have seen a couple of new faces in this game for Kenosha Tremper, who we did not see in. In yesterday's game, I want to get something jump started as we approach a minute left here in the opening half with a two goal Redbird lead already. Mahoney, Larson, and on the knee, it is Megan Lindstrom. The game has been described as solid by many around this program. But the Pure team returning nine starters from. Last year's team. Last year's team went on to lose to Bayport in the regional final. That was an upset in 2011 after knocking off Manitowoc Lincoln by way of a regional semifinal. In the 2010, they lost in a sectional semifinal against Sheboygan North, but again, able to get redemption some two years later. 
Final 20 seconds will tick off. Okay, Lawrence Butgerber and Carmen Villarule. The two goal recipients for the, the Pier Red Birds. And so they will go into halftime in this Division I state semifinal. Up 2-0 over the Kenosha Tremper Trojans. Second half is coming up. You're watching the 30th annual WIAA Girls Soccer State Tournament at Fox Sports, Wisconsin.
Recapping first half scoring, the field goal was scored in the first minute by Lauren Slipperber, assisted by Matt Miller. The field goal in the 29th minute, scored by Carmen Villarreal, assisted by Jessica Slipperber. There's something everyone can do in a high school sporting event that can make the game more enjoyable. Something that still allows for the players and coaches to go all out in the pursuit of success. 
It's something that allows the fans to pop up the ball and supporting their team. At the same time, it's something that captures the essence of educational athletics and shows respect for all. What is it? It's sportsmanship. Help your sport win the World of Insurance Sportsmanship Award today. Second half, about to get underway in this D1 stage semifinal between the De Pere Redbirds and the Kenosha Tremper Trojans. De Pere in front, 2-0. Kenosha Tremper in the all-blue. And De Pere in the all-white. With our great crew behind the scenes, Matt Menzel on hand here from Time Warner Cable Stadium with Eline Soccer Park in Milwaukee. 46 seconds on in. Lawrence Blitgerber on a feed from Matty Miller giving the... Redbirds the initial lead before an insurance goal scored by Carmen Villarule on the assist from Jessica Splicker, but that came 28-13 on in, and that's where we stand. It's up here trying to get back into the championship game for the first time since only other championship game appearance in 2007. Kenosha Tremper trying to get into the championship game for the first time in program history, and this being state tournament appearance number nine. Throwing for the Trojans. Trying to feed it to Maggie Edmark at a couple of breathers in that first half. Back out it comes toward the feet of Jenna Holowinski. That one taking a funny turn right toward the feet of Sarah Mahoney. Coming across. Back on the outside with Tara Larson. She had a strong first half for the Trojans. Ball kept in by Kelsey Dano. That's sent across now for Patrice Brown. Brown will send it ahead trying to feed Maggie Edmark. Pushed out of the way by Maddie Miller. Now Edmark staying with it, trying to cut back in with the back up there by... That's on that celebrate. But kicked out of play by Greta Arsham coming over to help out defense standing tall for the pier Brown will throw it in and now with Harbaker having a knocked out of play that was knocked out by Lauren Splitgerber so a corner kick will be set up That's going to be set up here by Haley Celebre. As the senior midfielder tying one of her cleats. 43rd minute. And sent back Celebre's direction. But out of play after it was Abby Savold who got a piece of it. Patrice Brown on the throw in. That deflecting off the head with Mahoney. Haley celebrated a late break. Mahoney. And Mahoney got sandwiched by two. That being Jessica Splitker and Abby Savile. Off the foul. Ball to be set up by Sarah Mahoney. Again, the reigning all count for the honorable mention. A season passed. Off the right footed strike. High ball. It's lifted again by Lizzie Hallbaker. Still loose. Hallbaker able to pound it in. Couple of looks at it in front by Lizzie Hallbaker. And the Trojans are back to within one. 43-12 into the contest. One more look at it. You see the first touch by Hallbaker. And Hallbaker off the left foot on the follow through from the ball came out of the hands of Megan Lindstrom. So a great follow through by Lizzie Hallbaker with the first touch. 
and then it was in the hands of Lindstrom. It came free, and Harbaker right there with the left foot to pound it back in. All kinds of traffic directly in front of Megan Lindstrom. And the Trojans down two to one. Harbaker started the scoring in yesterday's game for the Trojans after they fell behind by a couple of goals. She scored in the 33rd minute today. She scores in the 44th. What is her 15th goal on the season? Trojans certainly open for a little deja vu. So far this game has followed the same exact script with the exception being the halftime score. Because yes, again yesterday was O'Claire Memorial jumping up front by a pair for the Trojans back to within one thanks to Hallbaker and sure enough here again today falling behind by a pair and it's Hallbaker we're going to back to within a one. Hall Baker again. Stepping in front is Elise Valeri. On the outside with Larson. She'll leave it back. Valeri trying to find Mahoney. On the outside, Larson on the break, but that ball's going to roll out of play. Goal kick for Megan Lindstrom. Haley celebrate. Right back outside that midfield circle with Elise Valeri. Tapping it back. One touch and now headed toward the feet of Harbaker. On the lift. Now with Siraki. Foul against the pier. This in the 46th minute. Ball to be set up by the senior midfielder. A short kick trying to connect with Edmark. That's Harbaker with the short pass. Back out it comes her direction. Hall Baker, and now, again, trying to get a foot on it, but instead it was headed out of there. The pier in the outside with Greta Arsham. Sent back across for Villarreal. Right now, her goal, the difference maker. <coughs> Thrown for the Trojans by Elise Valeri. One hop off of Anne-Marie Riva, the senior on defense for the Trojans. And appear will sub Jenna Holowinski out. Subbing in is Al Kleiss, who, at least in yesterday's game, got the start in that second half, but today, again, coming off that bench quickly. Seven minutes on, out of halftime. Trying to help jumpstart the offense, and the feed goes to Abby Savo. Off the left foot, nice high ball is going to sail over. Able to get that shot off as she was battling Haley Celebrate. Off the left cleat with the flight. Abby Savold and a goal kick for Kenosha Tremper. At the flunked it off, Jessica Splitgerber. Staying on the Trojan attacking end, making some great adjustments at halftime. They have had possession here in this second half. Already quite a bit in testing Megan Lindstrom. Going to do so again. You have Siraki. Siraki coming on. And the strike by Harbaker going up and over. Siraki helped get it started after able to cut back in. Harbaker down the middle. Rocky coming in with 13 goals, 5 assists, heading to the state tournament. 
Yesterday had one shot, it was on goal. Lindstrom. And sent down to there by Jessica Splitgerber. Throwing will come forward to Pierre, who again goes back to that bench. And we'll see Ebert in, Drew Ebert back in, Abby Savolt, Savolt leaving the game. For the Redbirds it's going to be Maddie Miller with the running start to toss it in, directing traffic, looking for an opening. That deflected off the knee at Greta Arsham. Headed across midfield, oncoming. Waiting is Haley Celebrate. Mahoney. Now Mahoney getting in front of Drew Ebert. Back at it comes toward Alec Kleins. Continuing to control is Patrice Brown. Up to Sarah Mahoney. Mahoney cutting toward left against Drew Ebert. Off the left cleat, goes to the outside, finds Tara Larson. Leaving it now for Elise Valeri. Valeri trying to get around. Alyssa Balser, Valeri, swinging it back up top, but not much on it as Mahoney having to wait back. Back out it comes. Box bound, but it could take an enormous shot before Abby Siraki could even get a piece of it. Lindstrom, already a nice start here in the second half. That for the Trumper Trojans. Again, they came into the second half down a couple, but able to Cut the deficit in half, and they have controlled the start of the second half on this right side of the midfield. Edmark, leaving it nice feed, trying to hook up with Patrice Brown. Sends it across, but that's going to be scooped up by Megan Lindstrom. At just a second, they send it across. Lindstrom on the pickup. Heck of a kick back into the midfield. That was knocked down, down by Arsham. Now Kelsey Dano. At the flex off for Reese Ebert. The Trojan throwing downfield for Siraki. To her right side, she has Maggie Edmark. Siraki outside the box. And it spins out of play. Corner kick coming up for the Trojans. That's going to be set up by Tara Larson. One of the six all-conference selections back from that 2011 team that was a state qualifier, but falling victim against Wonkashaw West in the quarters. Knocked down down, some pushing going on after Megan Lindstrom reaching way up high to, to knock it down. The push call to Pierre will set it up. 52nd minute. Action certainly picking up, especially for Kenosha Tremper. Right now at the pier, just trying to hang on. The Redbirds able to jump in front 2 0, but again, the Trojans making the proper halftime adjustments. We saw that again yesterday with the adjustments made against the old apes. Siraki. And again, Lindstrom right there. In that ball cover direction time and time again. The solid junior keeper will put it back into play across midfield. Trying to hook up with Alec Kleiss. Larson heads it. Right to Carmen Villarreal. And offside with Alec Kleiss. Kleiss through this season. Again coming in with eight goals in which she has had three games of two goals apiece. Very early on this season, she had a two-goal performance against Green Bay East. Had a two-goal performance against Notre Dame. That was a 2-0 victory for the Redbirds. Had a two-goal performance as well against Pulaski, in which, again, the Redbirds would pick up a 3-1 victory. But again, instant energy off that bench. Instant impact player. They have three multi-goal performance, performances already, and much of those came right from the get-go. Here is Kleiss. Blowing by a pair. Trying to blow by a third. She'll take a left footed shot. Angles wide. 
that's her ability. Kelsey Dino was the only defender to beep. Again, he had Kleiss who was able to get the shot off. May, may have rushed it with Dano in her shadow. And Kelsey Dano to put it back into play. Playing on here in the 54th minute. Our sixth and final game coming up next. The six day semifinal Friday will culminate at 8 p.m. Madison West against Grafton. Off the Kenosha Tremper foul. Redbird set it up. Jessica Splitgerber as the Trojans back up. Three-man wall, the 10 yards. Splitgerber off the left, cleat gets the bend, and the catch made. Hauled in by Taylor Dwyer. Quickly gets it out to Haley Celebre. Celebre looks up field. Celebre, short pass, Siraki. Siraki trying to cut back to her right. She got spun around and dropped. Sarah Mahoney. Hallbaker trying to go back to Mahoney. In between was Joelle Stewart out there now for the pier. Only a freshman midfielder. And now dumped downfield by Patrice Brown. Remember defensively right now, Kenosha Tremper playing without one of their better defenders, Paige DeThorne. Went down with injury in that first half, hasn't returned. And Mahoney, goal kick to Pierre. So in turn as of right now, you have Anne Marie Riva, who has seen some significant playing time in that Trojans. With the thorn out, Patrice Brown has also stayed back along with Kelsey Dano. Among those four back there. Haley Celebre. For the Trojans, Elise Valeria is going to come in replacing Patrice Brown, giving her a breather on defense. Substitution into the Kenosha Tremper lineup seven. Elise Valeri replacing ten Patrice Brown. The Pier into the De Pier lineup. One change. As Villa Rule is back in. Out goes Arsham. And right now it is Villa Rule's goal 28-13 in. That's the difference maker. Trying to find it. Trying to get a piece of it was Mahoney. Out it comes to Kathy Celebre. Kathy Celebre trying to save it was Haley Celebre. She cannot. So Manny Mitz. That goes out of play right back to the Trojans. Well, again, they have controlled the play in the second half. A much different looking team than what we saw in that first half that would see the pier. Attack on two, but more of a midfield battle. Kathy Celebre was blocked. Backing her up is Lizzie Hallbaker. Mahoney come on, come on, with some room now for Elise Vall trying to find Larson. Out it comes to Mahoney trying to go back toward Larson. Putting back as well as Maggie Edmark. Been a focal point, but she has been well covered in this game. Off the head of Mahoney. Reese Ebert. That's going to bounce by Abby Savile. Thorne goes back to Sarah Mahoney with some lift. Kathy celebrates. And now with Lizzie Hallbaker going outside. Larson lifts it. This game stays 2 to 1 to Pierce. 
Trojans have had their fair share on the attack, keeping the pressure mounting against Maggie Lindstrom and the Redbirds. Trojans will bring Jordan Hollingsworth into the lineup again. This is her second stand of the semifinal. Joelle Stewart, Villa Rule, sent away by Hollingsworth. Headed back to Mahoney. Upfield trying to find Edmark. Hallbaker over to Elise Valeri. Back to Edmark. Little push from behind by Frankie Jansen. Larson turned around Reese Ebert. On the outside, staying with it. Larson sends it across. That's it off the crossbar. That did not cross the goal line. That did not cross the goal line. It's off the crossbar for Haley Celebrate. It was sent across as Larson never gave up on the ball and then it was Haley Celebrate on the header celebrating a no goal that deflected off the crossbar and angled out. One more look at it, Larson sent it across. Boy, that's awfully close. Right off the crossbar, that one landed straight on the line. Drew Ebert, offside flag against Joel Stewart. Not sure if we can say that one more time, but boy, that one was awfully close right off that line after it was Larson able to save it. Again, she sent it across. Here it is one last time. Larson able to save it. Came across the lift. That's right off that line, right off the head of Haley Celebrate off the crossbar. Lindstrom. And again, Haley Celebrate. Her first reaction looking over at the Huston referee on the near side in disbelief. We have a water break here in the 61st minute. It stays 2-1 to one to Pierre, but within an inch, the Trojans from tying this game up. But watch this. See if they can slow it down. The lift, the header right off the crossbar. And, poof, I'll tell you what, that ball looked like it may have been across that goal line. See the reaction there after with Haley Celebrate looking over toward the assistant referee. 61st minute, a two to one advantage forward the pier. Lizzie Hallbaker putting the Trojans on the scoreboard in the 44th minute. Right there, the Trojans scoring the equalizer. Stay tuned at eight o'clock. It's our second Division I state semifinal to wrap up our semifinal Friday is Madison West, the Regents. They will surprise DSHA. They did so by only getting one shot the entire game. They scored. DSHA had plenty of opportunities but could not finish. Madison West into that semifinal at 16, 7, and 2 against Grafton, who probably looked like the most dominant D1 team among the field in yesterday's action. The Blackhawks at 26 and 2, able to control the Nina Rocket from start to finish. D1 state semifinal action continues. Here at 8 p.m. So following the mandatory water break. Kenosha Tremper has continued to put the pressure on the Redbirds here in this second half. Coming out and able to get a goal within the first four minutes of the second half. The Storm back to within one, and they have again continued to get shot offs against Megan Lindstrom in this DePier defense. Although defense has played real well and keeping this one goal advantage intact. Over there to Reese Ebert. Larson again. But a playmaker for the Trojans. Throwing here for Tara Larson. That's toward Ambi Siraki. Mahoney. Goal kicks out of Ford the Pier. As the Redbirds back to their bench. Trisha Rhodes over on the sideline Ford the Pier back for her 11th season. In her stint 
with the Redbirds. Six conference championships, five regional championships, four sectional titles, and now four state tournament appearances, plus a runner-up finish in 2007. We get back to that championship game after suffering a tough 3-2 double overtime loss against Homestead. Hollingsworth. Mahoney. Back out to Larson, but Ebert able to lift it off the forehead of Jenna Holowinski. Just dumped down feet. So a Trojan throw in. Apparently trying to go back toward Mahoney, but the Redbirds will knock it down. Back out of coming toward Lizzie Hallbaker. Bouncing on by Abby Siraki. Sixty-third minute. Throwing now for Elise Valeri. Change being made in the Trojan eleven, which appears to see Hollingsworth leave. That's just over left, Cleta. Kathy celebrate. So Hollingsworth out and Anne Marie Riva back in. Again, filling that void created with the injury to Paige the Thorn. To the pier and Arsha. Arsha moving ahead, gets a shot off, but a scoop up for Taylor Dwyer. Greta Arsham coming in with four goals, three assists, 11 points. The freshman forward. And three out of those four goals coming late in the season, second part of the season. Haley celebrate following the, the pure foul, will get downfield. Riva. Hallbaker trying to get a piece of it on the slip and slide by Haley Celebre. Reeve up. Now Celebre on the turn. Trying to get around Drew Ebert. Near in that corner. Ebert got a piece of it. Now sent the cross in front. Knocked away before Mahoney could come up with it cleanly. Jenna Holowinski able to aid it in sailing out of play on that outside. Stone coming up for Tara Larson. We play on here in the 65th minute. Kathy Celebre will leave. Throwing going back to Sarah Mahoney. Right there for the pier, Alyssa Balser. Getting some help as the ball stays in for the time being. Now it's out. Corner kick here for the Trojans who came within an inch of tying this game up on a ball deflected off the crossbar, came straight down, apparently never crossed that goal line. Lindstrom able to catch it before it could bounce back in. Haley celebrate. Thought it was a goal, but waved off. And a peer will settle for the goal kick. Just joining us on this semifinal Friday, already four games in the book. As Lake Country Lutheran University Lake School Co-op will battle the Prairie School for the Division Three State Championship game. Our championship Saturday coverage gets underway at 10 a.m. And Division Two is going to be Mount Horeb in their first state tournament appearance battling Catholic Memorial. Every year but one that they have qualified for state, they've been in the championship game. Last year, the lone exception. There's a Trojan foul. That Division II championship game at 12 noon. Winner of this game will play at approximately 2 p.m. against the winner of our nightcap between Madison West and Grafton. Frankie Jansen. Off the toe with Carmen Villarule. 
Patrice Brown. That being left for Drew Ebert. Ebert touched it last, and so the Trojans, again, keeping that ball on that right side of the midfield. Some of the lights flick around here at Time Warner Cable Stadium, Milan Soccer Park. Headed by Mahoney. Trying to get a clean look was Maggie Edmark. And she was kicking through a couple of defenders. Got it off the toe. She was kicking it in the air. And Maggie Edmark continuing to have a tough time getting anywhere close to Megan Lindstrom. See in the background, the Grafton Blackhawks warming up. Grafton in their third season as a Division I team after many successful years at Division II. They went away from their first ever D1 championship game appearance after they lost in a semifinal by way of a shootout last year. And against Waukesha West. Alec Kleiss. Trojans throwing it in. Trying to find Mahoney, but back out of ghost for the Redbird bench. 68th minute. Bouncing right in front of Lizzie Hallbaker. Pressured by Jessica Splitgerber. On a turn now for the Pier. Villa rule. Leaving it for Abby Salvo. Dumping it downfield. There's a speed of Alec Kleiss in the foot race against Kelsey Dano. That one going out. The Pier. And for Abby Savo, she'll throw it in. Come back toward the ball as Villa rules. She'll get the short pass, but belonging out of the Trojans. And that was sent out off of Jessica Splitgerber. They like said grazed off of Haley Celebrate. Savo. No hurry here for the pier, trying to preserve this one goal lead. Bulk of the play has been on the Trojan attacking end. Much different half from that of the first. The pier able to score twice. 46 seconds in and then the 29th minute, but, but at a halftime it was Lizzie Hallbaker putting the Trojans for a second consecutive day on the scoreboard. Jansen. Now Mahoney. Edmark. Trying to come across back towards Soraki. Have to get back after Holowinski. Hallbaker. Trying to go right back toward Haley Celebrate. Out it comes. Long run to make for Patrice Brown. On the funny turn, it's controlled by Haley Celebre. Back Brown's direction, but sent back toward Alec Kleiss over her head. That was knee back into the midfield toward Lizzie Hallbaker. They direct it to the outside for Elise Valeri, but that's sent away. And again, we'll get to see Alec Kleiss put the pedal to the metal. They're able to beat Anne Marie Reva. Alec Kleiss. Beanie Reva on the outside. Tends it across, but nobody there. And a peer to the bench. 71st minute. And for the Redbirds, they bring Arsham back in. Alec Kleiss will get some rest after some nice long runs and able to outrace a couple of the Trojan defenders. Taylor Dwyer. Knocked on down as Mahoney waits back. Off the cleat of Hallbaker and now headed by Haley Celebrate. Maddie Miller. Knocked down by Haley Celebrate. And Carmen Villarule. That was kept in by Kelsey Dano. 
Bouncing to Siraki. But there again is Matty Miller. Having one heck of a school year has Matty Miller with volleyball state team back in, in the fall. You had the basketball team winning the state championship, and now here she is with the pier within eight and a half minutes of qualifying for the championship game. And trying to get back there since being a runner-up in 2007, the only other championship game appearance. Trojans have never been. Injury timeout, 72nd minute. Right now in pain with Sarah Mahoney. Able will get back up with the ball put back into play by Lindstrom. Paul Baker. That was off the knee of Siraki. Siraki shooting. And keeping it a one goal deficit. Abby Siraki. 13 goals that is tied for a second best on the team. He's coming into the state tournament. Currently now third base at Paul Baker's performances. Lindstrom. Siraki. That's going to be lifted over. Shot attempt by Lizzie Hallbaker again. Right now, though, the big story of this one was the was it or wasn't it a goal for Haley Celebrate. Certainly in the field, it was ruled no goal, but awfully close play as Tara Larson sits it across and Haley Celebrate hit it off the crossbar and it angled in front of the goal line. The replay, though, looked like right on top. As close as you can get for the Trojans without getting the goal cut in your direction. Stays 2-1 to one to Pier. Down to seven minutes left. Half number two. Abby Savold. Hallbaker. Ed Mark. And they still have not allowed Enmark many touches anywhere close to that box area. Revop, Enmark. And now with Haley Celebrate, Maggie Lindstrom on the pickup. Seventy fourth minute. Ball will stay in. That thanks to Patrice Brown, but played off the head by Lawrence Blickerber. Back out it comes, right toward Jessica Splickerber, but take it away. Hall Baker again. Plenty of white jerseys all around for the pier. Haley Celebrate. Haley Celebrate waiting. Back turn of that north goal is knocked out by Abby Savile. And the throw in here by Haley Celebrate. Hall Baker back to Celebrate. And Hall Baker on the Two-player game will throw it in. We have an official stoppage. The ball came free. A second ball coming free, and so the throw in here for the Trojans. 75th minute. Celebrate the side of the cleat. Not a clean, clear, but gets it up to Arsham nonetheless. Knocked away by Reva. But there's the backup. The backup by Holowinski. Villa rule. That was knocked out. Dano knocked it out for the Trojans. Salvo to Villa rule. Inside of five minutes. Staying with the Redbirds. Now it's going to be Haley Celebrates throwing for the Trojans. The Pirlo taking it right back thanks to Jessica Splitgerber. Villa rule. And right now she's got the game winning goal. Savile. Right behind her is Haley Celebrate. Trapped into the corner though is Savile before it comes out again to Villa rule. Stays in back in the corner letting some real valuable time tick off before being kicked out and belonging with the Redbirds.
And again, they had to stop it for a second as DePere now throwing it in. And it goes now with Greta Arsham. Back with Split Gerber. Now with Villarule. Villarule in the corner. Saves it from going out, but you see coming over was Kelsey Dano. Ball is out and a goal kick here for the Trojans. Trying to march down the field here inside of four minutes. Had a near goal that was a no goal off the crossbar that apparently did not cross that goal line. The state of one goal deficit. Larson trying to change that. That was off the backside of Lauren Split Gerber. Larson again knocked down by Split Gerber. Larson again will drill it. That's up off the top of the net. And she was the Trojan that helps set up that ball that was headed by Haley Celebrate. Lindstrom inside of three minutes. Siraki. Out of the clear, Reese Ebert kicked it away, but a corner kick for the Trojans. Knocked it away from Tara Larson. Larson on the setup. This is where they look for Haley Celebrate. Instead it's Mahoney. Shot was partially blocked on the attempt for Patrice Brown. And back out of comes. Trojans will throw it in, 78th minute. Hall Baker right back to Brown. Miller, another Trojan throw in. Approaching two minutes left. A couple of soccer balls on the field simultaneously and so the throw in here for Brown. Mahoney on the send in. Push in the box by Edmark. Going airport, that's headed wide. Headed wide by Maggie Edmark. Boy, how close have the Trojans gotten to tying this game up? Literally within an inch earlier. 90 seconds. And a stoppage of the clock for the upcoming goal kick as the pier. Taking their time to put it back into play. Coming right back again toward Haley Celebre. On the turn by Hall Baker. Siraki, that's drilled out of play by Hall Baker. Another goal kick for the pier as the Redbirds make a change as we approach a minute left here in regulation. That's going to see Savile leave. So back in for the Redbirds, Alyssa Balser kicked out to the Trojans. 45 seconds to go. Out back to the pier. Drew Ebert. Sent out, Trojans will throw it in with half a minute. Off the knee of Siraki. Corner kick, Kenosha Tremper. 20 seconds. Larson. Mahoney. Another corner kick for the Trojans inside of six seconds. Gotta strike it. Larson. As time expires, the De Pere Redbirds are moving out of the Division I state championship game for the second time in program history. And out for a 2-1 victory over the Kenosha Tremper Trojans. De Pere got a goal 46 seconds on in by Lawrence Splickerber. Off an assist by Maddie Miller. Carmen Villarul would score 28-13 on in. That turned out to be the game-winning goal. Her 17th on the season. 
in the second half. Most of the play controlled by Kenosha Tremper. Lizzie Hall Baker able to score to make it two to one at the 44 minute mark. Nearly got another. Ball deflecting off the crossbar. Angling out for Haley Celebre. And the Redbirds hanging on for a one goal victory. They move on to the championship game for the second time in program history. And this is their fourth state tournament appearance into the championship game for the first time since they lost in double overtime against Homestead back in 2007. And potentially another North Shore Conference foe will await them in the championship game. Kenosha Tremper dropping to 22-4-2. Their season coming to a close. And once again, in nine state tournament appearances, they failed to qualify for the championship game and missed their third semi-appearance. Stay tuned, our sixth and final game. 13 plus hours of state soccer coverage finally coming to a close with an 8 p.m. Division I semifinal featuring the Madison West Regents and the Grantham Blackhawks. For our entire crew, Matt Mendel saying so long for now from Time Warner Cable Station here on Soccer Park in Milwaukee. You're watching it's going to the 30th annual WIAA Girls Soccer State Tournament on Fox Sports, Wisconsin. <laughs>